Hello! This is a demonstration of the Inside View, a snappy feature new in version 2.8. To get started, pick an orientable hyperbolic manifold. Here I'm picking the figure 8 not complement since we're all familiar with it. Then type m.insideView. And now you see what you would see if you were inside the hyperbolic free manifold. The most important question is, how do you get around? Similar to many video games, you can use the arrow keys, some letter keys, or some combination of them to turn and move in the manifold. The key bindings are actually shown in the navigation tab, and you can change them using the preferences menu. You can also use the mouse to move or turn. With the shift key actually determining whether you're moving or turning. And depending on whether you're on a Mac or PC, you can use the command or alt key and click and drag to orbit about the point under the mouse. The other important question is, what are the objects you're seeing? Let's go to the Skeleton tab to understand the pieces of geometry coming from the triangulation. These are tubes about the edges. Note that there appears to be more than one edge of the same color, but in fact these are all images of the same edge in the triangulation. There are just many ways a camera ray can hit the same edge. In other words, you get the same view from within the manifold and from within the equivariantly colored universal cover. These are the faces of the triangulation. And if you move this slider to 1.0, you actually see the in spheres of a tetrahedra. And since all the tetrahedra are regular tetrahedra in this case, they actually just touch. If you move all these sliders to zero, you actually get a triangulation independent view of a hyperbolic free manifold. What you see now are the cusp neighborhoods uh, together with the longitude and meridian on these cusp neighborhoods. You can change the cusp areas of these cusp neighborhoods if you go to the cusp areas tab. Let me orbit about a point in this cusp neighborhood until I'm in the cusp neighborhood. And when you see that if you're inside the cusp neighborhood, the boundary of the cusp neighborhood actually becomes transparent and you can see outside the cusp neighborhood, though you still see the longitude and the meridian. This is a good time to introduce the ideal view. In the ideal view, the camera rays all leave perpendicular from a common horror sphere. In the ideal view, you can actually align the camera such that the meridian and longitude become straight lines. And the slide on the right lets you zoom in and out in the ideal view, respectively lets you change the field of view. While we are in a cusp neighborhood, let me re-enable the edge tubes to point out that edge tubes and other skeleton geometry stops at the cusp neighborhood boundary and does not extend into the neighborhood. Let me conclude this video with some Dane surgery. The fillings tab lets you interactively explore the effect of changing the filling coefficients on the geometric structure. Two notes here. One, if you veered off too far into non-geometric solution land, the snappy kernel might not recover when returning to something geometric until you hit this button. Two, the sliders follow the snappy conventions and zero zero corresponds to the complete cusp geometric structure even though it is the limit as the filling coefficients go to infinity. Thus you almost get the exact same image with the sliders being exactly in the middle and with one or both sliders being far away from the middle. If you actually want to see what happens when you perturb the complete structure, 
you probably want to start with the sliders being far out. Let's try this. You can see that the whole wall cast neighborhoods turn into tubes about geodesics, sometimes called Margulis tubes. Let me get the sliders close to a pair of co-prime integers and hit this button to round them so that they are exactly co-prime integers. The tubes now correspond to the torus added by the Dane filling with its core corresponding to the geodesic in the closed manifold the triangulation is spinning about. Here's the image when the camera is looking down that geodesic. If the coefficients are integers with a common divisor, you actually get an orbifold. And if you again look down the same geodesic, you see a rotational symmetry. That's all I wanted to show you. Enjoy exploring your favorite manifold, and goodbye.